call Brett Hudson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a great pleasure to stand and rise and speak on the Radio New Zealand Amendment Bill. And, uh, uh, look, I'd like to commend the previous National Speaker and Ms Curran for the very clear passion that they, they both share. They don't share the same views, but they clearly both share the same sort of passion on, on this topic. And like Mr Farfoy, who's just uh, resumed his speech, I'm going to perhaps be a little calmer uh, and measured in my views on this, lest people uh, observing this might wonder that there could be some artificial stimulant in the water. And I'd just like to reassure them that there isn't. This water is homeopathic water. It is merely water diluted by lots of water. It's very powerful stuff. Sir. So, Mr. Minister Adams, when she introduced this the bill in this reading, sir, she gave some context as to where we have come from to get to what we're preparing for today. And this bill is about helping Radio New Zealand adapt to the technological possibilities and channels and opportunities that that creates with today. But looking back gives us some context of, of where we have come from and come so quickly. So it was 1925 that we first had a public radio broadcaster. Mr Speaker, that's 91 years that we've had a public radio broadcaster in New Zealand. That's a phenomenal achievement when you think of it. And of course, none of us were there to witness that at first day or early days. But we can imagine, perhaps from stories in our own families over the generations, of what it might have been like. The old wireless technology, sir, valve technology that had to warm up before it would work, with uh, antenna uh, technology and reception that wasn't so great, so the signal would be difficult to hear. It would cut in and out. But people would cluster, families would cluster around to hear the news to be entertained, to learn more about New Zealand, to learn more about the world, to get up in the middle of the night as the stories are told, to hear about the All Blacks' exploits in countries far away, to hear the passion of commentators as they, as they describe the game, describe the points, describe the tries, sir. And today, today, we have high definition video, we have very high quality audio. We have digital technology for our radio broadcasts as well. We have not only our traditional airwaves, but we have the internet uh, as a medium for broadcasting both audio and video and in fact written content, sir. We have so many other forms and technologies, but at the heart of it, when we are consuming this, and I will refer specifically to Radio New Zealand content, whether it's over the airwaves, sir, or over the internet, at the heart of it, it is still delivering a broadcast of content which is informing New Zealanders about their communities, their country, the world and our place in it, the exploits of New Zealanders in cultural events, in sports, in business, in achievements around the globe. It remains as much of a valuable tool in informing and entertaining Kiwis and their families as it was 91 years ago, but it is, if we give it the support, it's able to do it leveraging and harnessing the technological capabilities that are available today. And when we look, sir, at why this bill is coming to the House, it is around this government's commitment to a commitment to deliver better public services. And that includes, sir, includes the continuation of a reliable, independent public radio capability. In fact, we don't just want to continue that capability, we want to expand and protect it for the future which is why this bill supports Radio New Zealand expanding new media platforms and to adjust to changing technological environments, sir. As Minister Adams pointed out, there are two core sets of changes in this amendment. One is a revised charter, and the second is to make Radio New Zealand technology neutral, although I'd use slightly different language there, sir, because I wouldn't like to give people the impression that neutral in this context is uninteresting or bland. It's quite the opposite. In this case, 
the technology is about exploiting all of the technological capabilities of the 21st century. So one that will explore, exploit web technology, sir, mobile applications, will stream audio, will stream other content, and give far more opportunities for Kiwis to be informed. But let's look first, sir, at the Charter. The Charter uh, is a very practical and pragmatic shift or, or reinforcement. It makes a stronger statement, sir, about Radio New Zealand's role as a public broadcaster. And in fact, in the recent financial review in the Commerce Select Committee, in that public hearing, sir, Radio New Zealand confirmed, re reaffirmed their commitment to a core free-to-air service and no advertising. They also said, and I take a note because the members opposite, particularly the previous Labor speaker, uh, talked about how dire the circumstances for Radio New Zealand are, their comment, from, their comment from their chair was, despite difficult circumstances, they, the board, were confident that they will meet their anticipated budget for the next year. This is a business, sir, that also has to operate in an environment which is post a global financial crisis. They are delivering more content on more channels to more people in trying financial circumstances and are saying they can do it and they'll do it again next year. The board, the CEO and in fact the entire team of Radio New Zealand, sir, deserve our congratulations. Importantly, importantly, if the Charter is uh, reaffirming uh, their role as a public broadcaster and a commercial free uh, service, it's also, sir, been drafted, the text has been drafted and organised so that it's more accessible to the public. And after all, if this is a public broadcast service, it does make very good sense that the public should be able to understand the charter, what its intentions are and how it will go about delivering that. So I'd just like to make a comment about the, um, or a note or two about the select committee process in 2009 when this was referred to this, uh, the Commerce Select Committee. Uh, unlike 2005, sir, when about 163-odd submissions were heard, and despite all of that public interest, despite the clear interest in the uh, Charter revision and the amendment, Labor sat on the bill and didn't bother passing it, despite that public interest. No, they clearly felt, sir, that light bulbs and low-flow showerheads were far more important to New Zealanders than actually the, their public broadcasting uh, radio service. Now, well, in 2009, when it went before the committee for a second time, there was a single submission that was made, and, there, and that submission, sir, supported the amendments to the Charter. But the committee didn't sit on its hands, sir. They also sought advice from the Ministry for Culture and Heritage and from the Clerk of the House of Representatives on whether to propose an amendment that would require Radio New Zealand to broadcast summaries of parliamentary proceedings. Uh, and I can say there that, that, that that was made in relation that New Zealand, Radio New Zealand was no longer making those sorts of broadcasts. They were advised that contractually that was controlled by the Office of the Clerk and technically out of the remit of that particular committee, but that the broadcaster has no editorial input and that would preclude a contract with Radio New Zealand. And while that's unfortunate for New Zealanders in that it was you know, determined that they probably wouldn't be able to broadcast these proceedings, uh, we can at least celebrate that it was reaffirming Radio New Zealand's right to exercise editorial control over whatever it is that it was broadcasting. So, sir, the, uh, the amendment or uh, the bill was... Uh, recommended back to the House by that committee uh, without amendment. Uh, that was in 2000 and uh, yeah, a few years ago. <laughs> so what I'd like to talk about is the future-proofing part now of this. And what we see here is a change in amendment that will support far more web content, webcasting, audio, 
video content. But what's really exciting is the wireless uh, uh, launch they've had. Something is growing at a phenomenal rate and is really connecting with other demographics. Sir, sorry, I'd just like to members, commend this bill no, to them. Sorry, the member's time has expired.